Well, it is Wellness Wednesday, and so we like to talk a lot about your wellness, what you eat, you know, workout tips, all sorts of good stuff. Right now in studio with me is Dr. David York. He's Utah State University's Center for Advanced Nutrition, I'm the director of that. Now, Dr. York, how you doing? Oh, very pleased to be here. Good. Well, thank you. You're from England, and you actually made your way somehow to Utah. <laughs> yes, I uh, went to Louisiana State University for five years and stayed for 18 years, but, and then came to Utah about two and a half years. Ago. Well, good, and you you like in Utah so oh, far? It's wonderful. Good, wonderful. good. A good place too for physical activity to stay in shape, to kind of go outdoors, be active. Um, I was saying earlier it was funny when Michael O'Malley sent me your email and said, "Here's the slides, you know, that we want to show during your interview." I was eating peanut M and M's <laughs> <laughs> right when it came through, and I looked at it and went. What is this? I'm eating this, and here it is. You know, all these slides tell me what I should eat, what I shouldn't eat, <laughs> how to be in shape. But you really, I mean. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what is advanced nutrition and what it is you do at Utah State University. Well, as you know, the uh, Center for Advanced Nutrition was, uh, is a U-Star initiative, and what we've developed uh, up, up at, in Logan is a really state-of-the-art biomedical research lab where we can do basic science, but we've also got a human um, metabolic kitchen which allows us to do human nutrition studies as well, so we can translate our findings in the basic side of nutrition into the human uh, area as well. So we're, we're really a, a biomedical research unit which is focusing on uh, nutrition as it relates to many of the uh, modern day chronic diseases. When we talk about nutrition in modern society compared to what it used to be, pretty different and the, the obesity level has essentially risen greatly. Oh yeah, the obesity is probably the major health problem that uh, most modern countries uh, are now have. And I think you can illustrate that by, by uh, this is a, in fact a, an interaction between the genes that we inherit and the environment. So if you look at uh, Michelangelo's uh, statue <laughs> of David, <laughs> Michelangelo uh, was um, uh, sculpted that statue in the 16th century and you can see he was beautiful lean David but if Michelangelo had been living today David would look very much different as you can see on the on the right hand side of that and I said and to you why didn't you why wasn't I back then look at him nice strong lean man <laughs> well I think that's, that's clearly a, a, a representation of how the environment has influenced our physical characteristics because the genes that we inherit have not changed since Michelangelo's day to today. What has changed is the environment, the amount of food that's available, the variety of food that's available, the amount of physical activity that we have to do in our everyday life. These are the sort of environmental changes, different stresses and so on. So it's the environment that has changed. It's our genetic predisposition, predisposition and how it interacts with that environment which is really the basis of most of the uh, modern day chronic diseases. Okay, so you're talking about genes. How, how much is it that drives you from your genes what to eat compared to, you know, you are what you eat today? I mean, what are we, does that make sense? Uh, Yes, I mean, to, to an extent that's absolutely true. You are uh, what you eat today. Um, but what you eat is uh, reflected on the basis of your own individual genetic background. Um, and so if you eat a particular diet, it may have a different response in you than in another individual because mm -hmm. the, their genetics are, are different. Mm -hmm. But conversely, our genes also influence our, ch our choice of diet, how much we eat, what act actually we do with the food that we eat, how we metabolize it, mm -hmm. how much physical activity we do, uh, how efficient we are at physical activity. So there's a big gene um, environment interaction. And I think if you if you look at the, this this next slide, we can we can uh, influence uh, show the influence of genetics in a, in an animal model. Here we have two strains of rat, one called the OM and one called the S5B. The blue lines are the OM, and we give these two strains of rat three pots of food: protein, carbohydrate, and fat. And you can see they they eat the, roughly the same amount of protein. But the uh, S5B rat in grey eats lots of carbohydrate and a little bit of fat, whereas the OM rat eats a little bit of carbohydrate and much more fat. 
And if you see on the right hand side, the OM rat gets very obese, the SYB rat stays thin. So if we could understand what are the genetic determinants which make one rat eat lots of fat, like fat, have a fat appetite, or conversely, why the other animal doesn't like to eat fat. That will give us insight into human eating behavior and why certain, some of us love to eat fat and highly palatable foods. Well, so if we are trying to figure out what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat, you talked about the DASH diet, yeah. which I'm not exactly sure what the DASH diet is, and I don't know how many people that are watching okay. do as well, so why don't you tell us what the DASH diet okay. is? The DASH diet is a diet that's now recommended to r reduce your cardiovascular risk. It's the result of a, a large multicenter trial, and uh, the DASH diet is effectively very high in grains, vegetables, fruits, uh, low in fat, and uh, relatively high in low-fat uh, dairy products. And you see on, on this graph that while the DASH diet is recommended for to reduce your cardiovascular risk for the whole population, my colleague Dr. Lefebvre in, in Logan has, has looked at the individual responses to this diet. And, and what you can see on the slide is in the, in the green, uh, this is a, about 100 people who were put onto the DASH diet. And all those people in green had positive responses to the DASH diet. Their cardiovascular risk went down. So their, their bad blood lipids went down and their good blood lipids went up. Their blood pressure went down. So their risk for cardiovascular disease went down. But you can see on the right hand side all those people in red either didn't have a response to the diet or in fact their, their risk got worse in response mm. to the diet. So I, I think this illustrates a really important uh, aspect that when we m make recommendations uh, in terms of diet, the recommendations are for the population. And it doesn't mean to say that you as an individual will benefit from that, from that diet. And one of the things we're trying to do in, in Logan is try to understand this individual variation. Mm -hmm. Can we identify markers which would tell us which people would benefit from the DASH diet and which people will not respond to the DASH diet? Because then we can move into an area of more personalized nutrition. And we can say, well, you have this genetic maker or this biomarker, this diet will work on you, this diet will not work on you. And this will make life much easier <laughs> in terms of not only treatment of disease, but also prevention mm -hmm. of many of the uh, chronic diseases. So it is something, I mean, with any diet, you, it's essentially trial and error. You just kind of have to figure out what it is going to work for you and try it out, see what's going to happen, and then if your body doesn't respond properly, maybe yeah. change a few things in the diet or... Yeah, I mean, at the moment, that's exactly that way, but mm -hmm. it, that's no, no different really from pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. You know, we all respond differently to drugs, and a particular drug may be very uh, effective in one person and not be effective in another, so the doctor changes the drug. Well, we're virtually in the same place in terms of nutrition. What works in one person doesn't necessarily work in another person person and we really want to understand this individual variation because mm -hmm. if we do it will allow us as I say develop this personalized nutrition and it will open up the huge avenue for economic development as well mm -hmm. because there will be assays to do for biomarkers new treatments etc and economic development is what Ustar is also supposed mm -hmm. to be about and this will obviously be a benefit to to uh, Utah and hopefully we can work with uh, many of the uh, nutraceutical, the supplement companies here in Utah to help them develop uh, new food additives or food supplements which will be uh, beneficial against many of these uh, chronic diseases. Now, if people want to get a hold of you to kind of find out, you know, they want to, they're interested in yeah. what you're talking about, can they email you? Do you have like Absolutely. seminars that they can come to? They can, they can email, email me at david.york at usu.edu. Um, I'd be very happy to respond that way. That may be the easiest way of, of contacting me. Um, we don't have a lot of public seminars at the, at the moment, but we are actually planning to develop some of these in, in, the, in the summer. Um, so if we go to our website as well, which is www. Uh, let me think, www.can.usu.edu, they should also be able to find information on that. 
Great. Well, it's a very interesting topic, and it's something we all have to think about um, and, you know, really pay attention to your health. So, Dr. York, thanks so much for coming in. It's been my pleasure. Nice Thank to see you. you. Well, again, that was Dr. David York. He is...